Hey everybody, PJ back with another Exotic Car Hacks video. And today, children, I decided that over the next three videos, that's right, three full videos, you get to hear all about how to spec a car, how to modify a car, and what makes sense dollar-wise to make it work for you. So in today's story, we're going to spec a new Lamborghini STO together, looking at some of the specs I've done on some of my cars. And more importantly, we're gonna learn what makes sense so you don't look like a Mexican at a Kmart with your Lamborghini, because that wouldn't be very nice now, would it? We've all seen that guy, you know who you are out there, that goes to advanced auto parts and decides to buy a roof scoop for your car or put some dice near the steering wheel. It's just not okay. It's really not okay. Now you could be Mexican, you could be black, you could be Middle Eastern, it still would not be okay. Or you could be white, yeah, that wouldn't work either. In case you were confused, there are some things to do and some things not to do in the car world. And one of the things not to do is to put pinstripes on your car. And the other thing not to do is to go to advanced auto parts and buy parts for your car. Nobody does that anymore. That was in the 90s. Don't live in the 90s. We're in the 2020s now. You saw what happened with the pandemic. You don't want a rat to come get you or a bat, so just don't do it. In today's episode, we're going to spec out our Huracan STO together removing all pinstripes and stickers and understanding how colors work together. So we're gonna have a giant palette of crayons together and we're gonna basically draw on an STO on a screen and look at the best possible options for the STO and how to spec it. And that should hopefully teach some of you to stop putting horrible specs on the road, thinking that blue cars with red interiors make sense. They don't, they really don't on any basis for any reason, no matter who you are. You just can't do that, you just gotta stop. I know you think it's so cool French colors, but you're not French. It's just not gonna happen. You're not, this, you're not a distinguished person. It doesn't work that way. You're a normal person. You're gonna drive great cars. You're gonna make money driving your cars. So let's look at these specs together. I'm gonna work through a screen recording here so you can actually follow through and see how we spec an STO. And then from there, we together will end this video and wait till next time. There's more surprises when we look at modifications together. Remember, no advanced auto parts. Don't do it if you were thinking of doing it. Just don't. Let's get into it. All right, everybody. So we are back now and looking at the Huracan STO configurator. So here we're going to configure the exterior, the interior, the options, and then basically get an idea on the car. So we're not really looking at cost here. Uh, one of the key areas here about cost basis is going to be discussed in the third segment of our video uh, over the next uh, weeks. But for now, one of the things I want to show you here is just basically how we pick colors uh, and look at that. So first, we're going to look at the paint option. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, again, all of the ad personum palettes first. Now, personally, I like these because in general, ad personum palettes are just much more exciting uh, than not. So I always start with the highest because I think spec when it comes to colors matters much more than anything else. So here we have Blue Luffy. I'm going to take a look at some of these other ones. The configurator sometimes are a little slow. Uh, and you see right away as you're doing this, you notice that uh, you have this two-tone thing going on. And it's really fucking annoying. And so one of the ways you can't really tell what's good or not is you have this two-tone thing going on. So I'm going to go here and do the contrast color, which is basically all of this contrast pack. You see all these colors. So what I'm going to do in order to really know the paint options best, I'm going to make everything black, basically, right? So I'm going to get rid of that. And the other thing I'm going to do instantly uh, is get rid of uh, all levels uh, of any level of, uh, what do you call it, sticker pack. So I'm going to remove the sticker packs, uh, period. And I'm going to remove uh, sticker pack two so that there's basically no stickers anywhere. Now this, even if you decide to add the stickers later, which I think is a huge mistake, uh, it takes away from the cleanliness of the car. One of the concepts here is to be able to not only remove all this stuff from the car, uh, but then have a really clean look uh, at the car itself, you know? So let's take a look now that we've removed the contrast and made basically this piece gloss black. Let's take a look here back to the paint options we have. So at Persona, we took a look at, let's take a look at some of these other options too, to see if there are any colors that really appeal to us. So we know the STO is basically a race car, uh, which is part of the reason why we want to stick, in my opinion, to a darker tone. So regardless that we do a blue or yellow or anything, we want to do a stronger, more solid tone. 
Uh, I like blues on Lamborghinis. I think blues the a better resell lately. Like look at how instantly doing this particular blue note here. Look at how much meaner the car instantly comes out, right? Then looking at Verda Scandal here, I just want to show you. Like you take this car, you basically get like a very playful look, you know, with the Verdes and like now you just basically look like a toy. But look at this instantly with a race car. Now, one of the concepts I use when it comes to modding a car or modifying a spec is I look at if the car is wild, I consider the SVJ, the STO wilder variants of the basis. I undertone the colors to allow the design of the car to basically function. However, if the car is very uh, neutral, like a regular Evo or Evo rear wheel drive, then I make the colors pop brighter to offset and bring attention to the design. So here, the design does all the speaking on its own. So I like the dark color and I really, really like this particular color. So I'm going to start with this uh, dark blue and I think we can use that because if not, we could go on forever. So I really like this dark blue. I think it, it would do fantastic. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do here before anything else, because we're not at the interior yet, I'm going to hit the caliper color and I'm only going to try two variations here. Usually blues work really, really well with either blue, orange or yellow. So we're going to try orange and we're going to ignore the fact that the interior right now is red because we're going to change that uh, once we take a look at what calipers work. So orange looks really, really nice here. Uh, and I think it could work. Let's take a look at yellow. Uh, yellow is a brighter color. And usually I like yellow because it's associated with carbon ceramic brakes for Porsche. And while this is not a Porsche, I think in this case, uh, it does bring a lot. But you see here, it's very, very bright, right? So we're going to go to wheels here and see if we're doing anything with the wheels that changes the color. Uh, this is also important because a lot of times if the wheel changes color, then it changes the entire dynamic of the car. So that's going to give us a different look. So we're going to look at yellow and a bright contrast like that and how that works with that color. And you see here with the silver, it's exciting, but it's not that great, right? The black was really good. Uh, this is diamond finish. It's kind of brighter. Diamond doesn't really work, unfortunately, on race cars because it, it kind of uh, makes it like a street car. So black would probably work best. So let's try. Gray wasn't too bad either, but really the yellow doesn't seem to pop as much. So in this particular case, one of the reasons I also like the yellow more than the orange is because it matches the logo that has gold to it, right? So you have this good, really, really good, uh, really, really good model here. So we're going to leave the wheels black. Let's go back to the calipers for a second and test out the orange again. You see, I'm not really sure what I like better. So one of the things I'd like to do is maybe take a look at the car in a different light. Let me see if there's a different maybe angle. We can look at sideway angle to really get a good look. Uh, see if it changes at all. Uh, we're going to give it a second. These configurators are like brutally slow, which is like boring as hell. see that but I do want to see another angle I just don't know why it's not turning so it's showing me the back the front it's really not showing me any other angles it's very annoying okay usually you can turn it maybe they start this took that particular thing away from the configurator so there's only two basic options here side it should have a side angle I don't know why it's not doing that but anyways so here in the orange I really like the orange kind of follow through. So I'm going to I'm going to work off of orange first. I like the fact that it's a little bit darker. So we're going to keep that. We're going to go to carbon here. Uh, and usually carbon, the way I look at carbon is I, I either do a contrast. In this case, it's dark. So I can contrast either gloss uh, or matte. Now I'd like shiny carbon in this case, because it gives us more options in case we decide to matte the paint with PBF later, because that in itself could be super, super hot. So I'm going to leave the carbon uh, all shiny. So I have all of this. I have the right color. Let's go to the interior and take a look at how we spec the interior to basically match everything we just saw on the outside. Because it seemed like we really, really liked, uh, really, really liked. Um, I mean, I would say uh, I really, really liked the orange. So I'm going to go with an orange interior um, to kind of match again. But as I look here, this is basically stitching. And I really like on more aggressive cars here. I do like, I really, really like, uh, really, really like the more aggressive seats. 
So now it seems to be red, but it's really orange. So this is where the configurator is going to be a little bit difficult to see because, you know, on one surface it kind of looks red, but it really doesn't. So what we did here is we basically did the inverted stitching uh, on the orange, right, which I think is like great. So we're looking at it. We're going to take a look at the design. Now, one thing with the seats, this has the sport seat option, which is significantly better than anything else out there. We're going to check the belts uh, and we're going to see if there's a belt that may make sense. Because sometimes, again, the belts don't. So here we have orange. So we're going to do the orange belts too. And I like that a lot. So I think that works. So we're going to do that. Okay. So we have orange belts. Uh, we have orange highlights on the inside. Uh, we're going to go to details. But again, here when we're looking, it really seems to not be looking under any circumstance here. It really does not seem to be looking like orange. It looks like red. So I'm going to go here real quick. Interior carbon pack. I don't like the carbon wheel pack, so I'm going to get rid of this crap. This is basically the fake carbon like leather, which I think looks like complete shit. I don't know why it's not going away. Oh, so it's either together or not. So we have to leave it because we really want the carbon pack. So let me see. Actually, you know what? I'm going to remove this interior carbon pack because I don't like it. And I don't want it. I think it's better without it. And it save us some money too because it won't be that fake carbon shit. Uh, the dark chrome package, I really want. I think these small things make a big difference. And on this particular car, I also want the carbon interior pack. Uh, but I don't want the twill pack, I just want the interior. So for now, I'm just going to do the interior shadow pack. And this makes a big difference. The small details really, really work here. So here we have special trim. Let's take a look at if we have anything else. Seats and belts, we already did. Uh, carbon skin pack, we don't want. Uh, so I really like the interior. Like simpler is better. Uh, less bullshit. But let's see if we have special trim carbon skin package. Okay, so now the interior looks really nice. So we can see it. So details. I wonder if this is hard. See, it's really hard to understand if these carbon packs are, are really... This seems to be not the skin, but the actual... Yeah, because this gives us the carbon here as well. So let, let's leave this interior carbon to basically match. Floor mats. We're going to do floor mats in aluminum because carbon floor mats are like $4,000 and they're shit. And for the steering wheel, we're going to do a multi-steering wheel here. And the steering wheel stitching, obviously, is orange to match. I'm going to check steering wheel option. Alcantara, also fantastic. These are all basically standard on SDO, and it makes sense to kind of leave it that way. And that gives us uh, a very, very good-looking car. But here, you know, we have other options like rear-view camera. We're going to want to add that. Lift system, 100%. This is where design meets function, right? more than anything else. Uh, electrochromatic exterior mirrors, CarPlay, 100%. Uh, one thing I would do, the 4th year warranty, 100% and much cheaper at first. Uh, cruise control we never need on race cars, and this is one of the big, big issues here people do. You can also get maintenance pack, five years, etc. I personally don't, because I don't think people keep this shit long enough to even care. Uh, but let's go to the outside now and take a look at our car. Okay, so you see again, the, you know, the, the one issue I have here is you really don't get, uh, you, you really, really don't get a good enough, uh, you really don't get a good enough look at how the orange is going to match because the interior orange is very red. So what I would say is in general, if I was going to spec this car right here, uh, and I was going to go with something like this, cleaner and simpler, I would probably now have to go to yellow. And, you know, partially because I think yellow on the inside and outside just matches much, much better. Uh, and so I really like that configuration in general of yellow. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go on the inside and I'm going to switch all of the inside colors and trim to basically now be yellow. I'm still going to do the inverted stitching because I like that part. So I have the interior in yellow. Now I'm going to go to the seat belts. I'm also going to make sure, of course, they match. Seat belts. I'll go 
those here. And of course, there now should be yellow, so it only makes sense. Okay, special trim. All the rest I'm going to keep, no problem. The steering wheel, I'm just going to make sure everything matches. Okay, and everything matches. So now we have basically the dark shadow package. We have everything else we need, but we have yellow contrast. So now let's go back outside, take a look at our car. Now the reason you see now this is much better, it flows much better, but even on the contrast of the yellow and, and the calipers, we can also play a little bit and go here and take a look at other colors that maybe give us variations of how yellow would play uh, really well. Like let's say we did Grigio Telesto, which is really, really hot color. And, and we know that Grigio Telesto and, and uh, yellow are just a great combination. Look at that. Boom. I think this is way hotter than the blue now. So now you have a very contrast, super sick, just car. And you see, if you add stickers, now you take that design and you basically fuck it all up, which is why I really don't like that. Let's look at the electric colors. Uh, Oreo Ellis is also beautiful, not with yellow. This is not, this is more of an ad personam kind of built, but I really, really like uh, Oreo Ellis too. Just not, I, you see, I, you just can't see the value on these shitty configurators. They just look like asshole. Uh, like it just doesn't look very good at all. So Grigio Artist, let's take a look at that. Grigio Artist, not bad at all either. Silver looks really nice here. Really, really nice. Really, really nice. Now we have Grigio Delisto, also very good, but then we have matte options too. Let's see if we have a Grigio Titan. Takes a moment to update. Oof. There you have it, guys. I think this is the hottest right here. I think this is the hottest STO. <clears throat> Just basically taking in a couple of basic key concepts. Universally love matte gray. Uh, yellow highlights, very well done. Lots of carbon. Now we have matte with shiny carbon. Uh, we have the right interior options. We have the right uh, options on the function side. And we ultimately have uh, our car. And so I think this is one of the uh, cleanest and easiest. You see, it tells you everything that's shiny here and the easiest spec to look at. We double check everything's good. Uh, we'll basically save this and submit it. So this gives you a good idea, though, you see, like by just looking here, how everything just kind of flows. But uh, again, you see it says sticker pack, STO logo on door panels. I took that off. So that's why you want to always check these things. But you see somehow it's not in the graphics, but it's still showing in the details. So you'll have to make sure to go back if you're doing a configurator so you're not submitting the wrong thing or reviewing it with your dealer. But I just want to show you how I spec cars and basically how I come to these palettes and choices of colors uh, to really make a universally love car that's going to lead to bringing in more money at launch even if I choose not to keep it. Because one of the big issues is people design shit that nobody else wants. So if they change their mind, they can't make money off their spec. And here, uh, I'm going to challenge you to start thinking bigger and better in the way you spec your cars. All right, children, we are back and we have actually completed our spec of the STO. Is that amazing or what? Together, we were able to take crayons and make a beautiful drawing, something that will hopefully make you money instead of losing money. That's what we teach at Exotic Car Hacks. So click the link and actually learn that. The training's free. And no, it doesn't have closed captions. So if you're blind or you're deaf, it probably won't help you. But if you're a normal person and can actually read and see things, it will 100% help you learn how to hack cars. Now, for everybody else, make sure you join us in our next video where we will show you how and what OEM Plus is and also how modifications work. Uh, make sure you like the video or if you feel offended, even like it more so I can keep offending you. Make sure you leave a comment about how sweet I am or, yeah, let's just say how sweet I am and how much you love me. Just leave the comment. You know you love me. Don't pretend. Don't pretend. I know. And make sure you subscribe because you want to see more of me. When you hate people, you want to see more of them on your screen. It gives you more, uh, what do you say, validation about your own life. So do that, and I will see you guys on the next video where we're going to cover all OEM Plus and modifications. And remember, we said that at the beginning of this video. No advanced auto parts, no Mexican parts on exotics. This is exotic car hacks, okay? Thank you.